Hello, this is the Greater Legion, and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedokun. No part of Lagos will be left undeveloped. This is a promise from Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu. The governor made this declaration while on a walking tour and visit to Badagri tourist sites and projects to have first-hand knowledge of the needs and challenges of the people in that area. Governor Sawolu reiterated his administration's commitment to make the Badagri exits of the state a tourist attraction city. He said the Asian city of Badagri, with many historical and tourist sites, has a lot to offer Lagos State and Nigeria as a whole in terms of tourism potentials. Greater Lagos is indeed rising. I'm Love Ikuku Oyedokun. <music> Youths have been reminded that they are leaders not only for tomorrow, but today. As such, must think out of the box, innovate, and unleash their leadership potential. Governor Babajide Sawunlu stated this at the first Lagos Leadership Summit organized by the Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy held at the Conga Place in Lekki. <laughs> The event organized by the Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy presented an opportunity for inclusive interaction between the old and new generations. Debates, speeches, and panels delved into topics that challenged the mental, emotional, and physical preparations of the youths to take up leadership roles. When you occupy a position and you belong to an underrepresented demographic, whether you like it or not, you're going to be looked at as an ambassador of that group. You're going to be looked at as a representative of that group. It's not fair, but it is the reality of things. And I think that as young people who have the opportunity to serve, we have to ensure that when we're allowed into these rooms, our character, our behavior, our performance, the way we conduct ourselves, our commitment to work, all of these things should add up in a way that holds the door open for other young people. Preparation. What's your goal? We've also talked about this morning about knowing you want to be a leader. But what does that leadership look like? What's your vision as a leader? So you must be able to paint that vision, articulate it, and share to as many as you believe will be a part of that journey of leadership with you. Discussants evaluated how young people currently in leadership positions have inspired impactful changes. Governor Babajide Sawunlu shared his personal leadership engagement story with the participants. He recalled how at 37 he was appointed into Lagos State Cabinet as special advisor with only private sector experience. The Deputy Governor, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, also shared perspectives on leadership and community engagement, strengthening the social fabric of Nigeria. How do we make sure that we build the institutional structures so that we can... So people have mentioned sustainability. Sustainability, that's exactly what it's saying. So it's not saying that... So, for example, if the... The, 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 the president, for example, released grains. It's not children in 20 years time that we eat those grains. It's today. But the question is, what do we do so that we don't need to be releasing grains? So that our children will not go through what we are going through today. Dr. Hamzat noted that foundation for building a consensus in the community has been jettisoned for individualism. This, the deputy governor said, has made parenting significantly deviated from its essential purposes. For his part, Minister for Communications, Innovations and Digital Economy, Dr. Bosun Tijani, urged the participants to go with the trend of technological advancement. 
He noted that the future leadership would be influenced by the industrial revolution that will be taking place in the era. Was the means that was used back in the days where leaders had to use the best way to reach people. And those best ways are different from today. If the governor today needs to do anything on taxation, part of his strategy is going to be how much information we're putting on social media. Which is something that we didn't do back in those days. So you can see how important technology is. And as a leader, as we think, you can't think of engagement, you can't think of leading without thinking of the implication of technology at the time that you're leading. It's extremely important. So particularly, for you to be a successful leader at this time, you must be visionary. There's no leader that can exist in the world we live in today without being a visionary leader. It's impossible. When the Mr. President said to us that as a nation, we must cultivate half a million hectares of land, a lot of people don't understand where that is coming from. We probably can still remember the campaign era, when the president was talking about cultivating mazes, and a lot of people thought that was disrespectful. But if you're a leader that is thinking deep, you understand the fact that the biggest supplier of grains in the world, the biggest supplier was coming from around Ukraine, and there was a war between, and still war between Russia and Ukraine, which is affecting the supply of grains globally. And if there's a problem with the supply of grains in the world, it will affect food prices in a country like Nigeria. So how are you a leader if your country can't feed itself? And that was where that thinking was coming from, from the leader. You must be a visionary leader. Yeah, round of applause. You must be a visionary leader if you don't understand that in the world we live in today, that there's misinformation because all the people you govern are on social media. And your opponents are going to see the information that may not be true. Your opponents will distort information and put it out there. And before you wake up to see this information, it's already in the hands of millions of people. So how do you manage that as a leader if you're not visionary? The first Lagos Leadership Summit ignited a new passion and zeal towards charting a new course of action for the country's future. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sogunlu has reiterated his commitment to transform the Badagri exits of the state and make it Africa's tourism hub. The governor who spoke during a walking tour and visit to Badagri tourism sites and projects said the ancient city of Badagri with many historical and tourist sites has a lot to offer in tourism. Governor Babajide Sawunlu was accompanied on the visit by the Chairman, CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, members of the Lagos State Executive Council and Lagos State House of Assembly, as well as officials of the Lagos State Diaspora Commission. They visited the slave market, Museum International Vlekete, Badagri, which was recently restored and upgraded by the administration. The visit, according to Governor Sawunlu, was aimed at getting first-hand knowledge of the needs and challenges of the people of the area. He said it was also part of measures aimed at paving the way for continued progress and development of the area. The governor also visited the Badagri Heritage Museum. The seeds of the fallen Agia tree where Christianity was first preached in 1842. The first story building in Nigeria, the first Christian burial site, the hospital road, construction project, and the old governor's lodge, a purpose-built 70-room and hotel complex. Fielding questions from journalists during the working tour, Governor Sawunlu said his administration will complete all ongoing projects in Badagri and restock some of the heritage sites. This, he said, was aimed at telling a compelling story about what Badagri holds for the tourism potential of Nigeria. 
Let's come and see things for myself. What are the things we have done? What are additional things that we've spoken about that we need to do? How do we um, intentionally make Badagri and all of the tourism potential that it has you know, a real destination? We also went to the old governor's, I mean, um, 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 lodge where you saw that there is a purpose built uh, 70 room um, hotel complex there. And so for us, it's to complete uh, the ongoing projects that we've seen to also uh, restore some of the heritage sites that we've seen and not to uh, completely you know, deface it, but just to restore them um, and, and to generally just preserve what we have and to be able to speak you know, uh, a very compelling story about what Batagri truly really is and what it holds for the tourism potential of our country. Speaking further, the governor said his administration will ensure that no part of Lagos is left undeveloped. And we've also seen that Batagri is actually having a major facelift. There are lots of new roads that you've seen, um, dual carriage roads that uh, are nearing completion. We've all seen it that we came around and the last time to open the hospital, you've seen the roads that they've all been done um, extensively. And indeed, Badagri, I'm very impressed because it's actually wearing you know, uh, a more cleaner road. We all came by road from Lagos, from, from all the way from Lagos Island, where we all walked together. And you could see that it took us um, just about an hour and a half, 15 minutes from Lagos all the way driving here back to Badagri. So this is a journey that either two will take three hours, three and a half hours. We've experienced it ourselves. And in one hour, 15 minutes, we're in Badagri. And you can see the citizens are actually very excited, right? And so really is to make sure that no part of Lagos is left underdeveloped or undeveloped. Right? And tourism being in a major, a major cardinal of, 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 our, of our team's agenda, I needed to come and see things for myself too, and also help. You saw around the IKEA Center that we have like, um, like an amphitheater there. There are a few projects here that we also need to complete around the marina here. Yeah? But I'm, I'm satisfied, you know, knowing fully well that we still have a lot of opportunity to do for Nigeria. Governor Sawolu also took a boat ride to the point of no return, where slaves were taken to different parts of the world during the slave trade era. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has reiterated calls for idea sharing and mutual respect between legislative and executive arm of government as the most assured way to succeed. Governor Sawolu stated this at the 18th edition of the Executive and Legislative Parley themed Engaging All for Inclusive Governance, hence on for a Greater Lagos Rising. The Lagos State Executive and Legislative Party, a taint in a series like previous ones, brought together past and serving members of the State Executive and Legislature. Organized by the Office of Political, Legislative and Civic Engagement, the forum provided opportunity for the elected and appointed members of the state to benefit from the knowledge experience and wisdom of the leaders who are the forebearers in public service and governance. It's just to bring the executive and the legislative together to be on the same page, to bring about good synergy on governance. What we notice that those are the two key um, major de facto in our political terrain. The executives are there the legislators are there. But what do we do we in, also in terms of discourse? How do we bring them together to judge up, agree on purpose of which they can take the state forward? What this brings about is to feed the people, the stakeholders on the activities of government, and to ensure that we follow up with our campaign uh, promises to better the lot of Lagos State uh, residents and indigenous. I think that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a forum that gives all of us opportunity to know what is going on. So the one when they ask us questions, we'll be able to answer and we'll be able to feed the entire Nigeria of activities of 
Lagos Church. And the beauty about mutual understanding and good relationship to all. Delivering his keynote address, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sogunlu commended the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa, and the entire lawmakers for their commitment and passion towards ensuring a better Lagos. And so what we see today is that the philosophy that drives effective and impactful governance is one that recognizes the importance of widening as much as possible the opportunities for citizens and its stakeholders participating in every state and process of decision-making and implementation. In a participatory democracy, which is currently operates, we have a key role to play as representative of our people at various levels. We are actually representing our people, and we are using that platform to create opportunities for them and to also support our individual aspiration. For us to achieve this goal, it is imperative that we continue to work together, understand and harmonize our differences, always on the side of overwhelming majority of our people in line with the manifesto of our party, meaning that our decisions will be driven, like BRF always say, the greatest good is for the greatest number, that always ensure that it is the people that have entrusted us with their lives, with the belief that we be in government will make life meaningful for them, will make it better for them, will create an ambience and an environment where security of life and property is paramount, is important, and will create an economy where people can live and breathe, you know, and know that indeed this government is working for them. I wish to acknowledge the fact that both the executive under my able watch and the legislature has continued to maintain an uncompromising posture in pursuant of the vision of a greater Lagos that we see. And I want to say that not only are we in Lagos doing that, our brothers and sisters, our colleagues at the National Assembly are also doing that. We've seen over the years a lot of support, a lot of collaborative effort, a lot of intervention coming from our representatives, you know, at the federal level who directly also work with us now to identify key gaps in all of the things that we're jointly, you know, doing, and they look for opportunities that they can directly intervene at their own level, and I want to use this opportunity to thank all of them, our senators and our members of the House of Representatives. Please, let's give yourself a round of applause. And to the legislator, you know, the speaker is not here, but I'm bold to say, and I think BRF also made the point you know, when we start, especially for members of the executive that are new, you know, um, and, and so when that executive was constituted, you know, a couple of months back, you know, um, and, you know, we have to present ourselves, you know, and get clearance and the rest of it. Those are the constitutional responsibility. Those are things that the House of Assembly must perform and must do, you know, with free of mind. And I want to commend them for doing that role. You know, and I want to say, that afterwards, they also have a constitutional responsibility, no matter how well we put the budget together, that they, the constitution has given them the power to look at it, to, to, to deliberate on it, and to issue a bill, an appropriate bill, you know, that becomes a guiding rule for us to pass, you know, um, um, our, our budget. And I want to say and commend the leadership and the members of the Lagos State House of Assembly for always, always, always coming through for us, you know, and ensuring that that working tool happens at all times. The governor promised to maintain a harmonious relationship with the state assembly, noting that it is good for the executive and the legislative arm to share ideas with mutual respect. So what we see is that the dividend of a mutual understanding and a collaboration between our executives and the legislature will create, you know, a direct benefit for our citizens. We'll be beginning to see the impact and the, and, and the import of it on some of the, some of the deliverables that happens on, on the executive side, you know, rail projects, you know, meal projects, food markets, and the rest of it. And that's why we're in government. And like um, my mom also said earlier when he was speaking, you know, um, to some people, um, you're an executive, you're a legislator, you're in government. They really don't want to hear excuses. They don't want to listen, you know, to the fact that you are part of government and you need to be able to own it. You need to be able to defend that government. You need to be able to take proper feedback back to the person 
that either will fix the problem, will resolve the solution, or bring about you know, a, a, a problem-solving mechanism. You know, we cannot shy away and try and explain it or excuse it and say that I'm not part of it. You are part of it in one form or the other. You've been elected, you've been appointed, you've identified with us, you are indeed part of government, and we all owe it a responsibility to the citizens to always show up for them and make sure that indeed when they knock on our doors, we can assist, we can listen to them, and we can help them solve you know, some of the problems that they have. In his lead presentation, our former governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, advised the government to reduce levies and taxes as a way of easing the current socioeconomic challenges on the residents. Fashola noted that interactions such as this is to build collaboration and provides a forum for the party to know what its government is doing. help to demystify uh, uh, each other before each other and then they eat together, they sit on the same table, uh, they socialize together and then they realize, okay, this person is not after all different from me and that can break down the prejudices and the barriers that are preconceived and then help to focus uh, attention away from the person to the subject. What's he actually saying? Let me listen to him. He dresses like me. He talks like me, so he drinks water too. So let me listen to what he or she saying. And this is important. So this kind of team building is very, very critical. And uh, it also helps to bring the party into the play. Because at the end of the day, the party is the one that owns the government. All the politicians must belong to one party in Nigeria, at least. So, and that, the campaign on the manifesto of a party, and this is, a, 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 if you like, a, a fact-checking exercise, if you will, or something similar to that, where the party is conscious or made aware of what its government is doing what his elected officials are doing, what they are planning for the people on whose behalf they, 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 they hold uh, authority. He maintained that the work is far from being over, especially at the National Assembly, noting that a campaign for special status for legal state should be realized. Special status for legal. But the first, the first point of all, for anybody coming to my day, so we must enjoy that. Transportation and so on. Now in some areas, it takes you three hours to get home after work and so on. And so. so we need to put in more into transportation to make life easier for people. We need to put in more into food so that we know in Lagos we don't have too much land. So we need some special consideration for us to get food. But we are working on it. The purpose is to make life easy for the government. In his welcome address, Special Advisor on Political, Legislative and Civic Engagement, Dr. Afolabi Tajudin, recalled that for nearly two decades, the executive and legislative party has stood as a cornerstone among numerous programs of the Lagos State government. Um, on, on many occasions, if you go to the House of Assembly, if we had met before going to House of Assembly, many of the in issues the of would have been discussed in this type of forum. And when discussed, by the time we meet, it's just going to be a walkover. So we want, and what it involves, it does not even involve the Lagos State Assembly alone. The National Assembly too, they are here. That is the, the senators, the, street, the senators we have, and the members of House of Reps, they are here. We might have matters of importance to the state. It is them that will help us on, the, on their plenary to bring the matter to the floor of House of Reps, get whatever the state wants for them, lobby with other executive members, and make sure that Lagos State is well positioned in whatever area, whatever ramification, and whatever they think, and what, whatever they think and the government thinks, they can move the state forward. The 18th edition of the Executive and Legislative Party is themed Engaging All for Inclusive Governance, Hands On for a Greater Lagos Rising.
that's all we have for you on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovey Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. Thank you.